everyone. Jason Gilbo here with DFC, taking a look at the Week 8 FanDuel Optimal lineup and stack that our optimizer came up with. Uh, obviously, this is Thursday. Projections update constantly throughout the week, so you may get something different come Saturday night, come Friday morning, whatever it is. Um, looking at the week seven review here, and we had some good calls. We also had some bad calls, so we'll be looking at both. Uh, Tevin Coleman uh, was in the GPP lineup last week. Great score about Devontae Freeman, uh, who, who you know, obviously left early but, but made his ends meet. Uh, Spencer Ware, Mike Evans, Jack Doyle were all over. Um, we also saw some Brandon Cook, some DeMarco Murray, A.J. Green in those lineups too. Um, it was a swing and a miss for Blake Bortles, obviously. He was a cheap one. Our cafe value was very high on him going up against an Oakland secondary. Uh, so that was a big swing and a miss. It didn't really pan out. Um, you also had Devonta Freeman, who was just pretty mediocre, obviously going to be in a bigger role now. But on the week eight, uh, we'll take a look at the cash game lineup here that spat out first. And uh, obviously Matt Ryan, home matchup against Green Bay. I do like that at 8,500. Uh, there is no Julio Jones to pair up with him here. I, I think that's okay. You should be pretty safe, especially because the discount Mike Evans gets you from um, him there. 7,900, he has one of our, our better cafe values on the slate for wide receivers. So you're going to see a ton of him in the lineups this week, uh, pretty much no matter when you run it. So I, I do like that pairing there. Uh, Spencer Ware, David Johnson, I really like these backs this week. David Johnson, obviously obviously priced up very expensive it, it made the choice to go with him but you look at what he's been doing I mean in terms of uh, a running back being very consistent David Johnson's been everything you know that, that you've wanted uh, over 100 yards uh, from scrimmage all-purpose yards of course uh, in every game he's gone up against some really good defenses uh, and done pretty well against them so while Carolina is a good rush defense still they'd still have a do do have a decent front seven I still don't mind him here obviously you can make some other moves and drop down to like a Lamar Miller Matt Forte if you're looking to go a different direction uh you will see some Devonte booker um pop up in in the optimizer um as things kind of adjust with that news coming in so i wouldn't be surprised to see things shake up and then julio jones pops up into the lineup i know they did already on dk because he's about 3600 there so look for booker to pop up or you can lock booker in and see what it pops up and does uh you'll get a lot of these kind of same plays um Spencer Ware, great matchup against Indianapolis. I like him a lot this week. Uh, Kansas City has a really high total, and you're looking um, at, a, at a defense that's been just allowing you know backs to just go to town. So uh, four receiving touchdowns for, for running backs against Indy this year. Um, they do rank inside the bottom five in fantasy points allowed. I do like Ware. He's going to be a staple uh, through a lot of my lineups, and, and it looks like this week as well for, for the optimizer. Uh, talked about Mike Evans. Do like him a lot. Randall Cobb, Larry Fitzgerald are two guys. Interesting values here um, in, in going with two Arizona guys. You know, you look at Fitzgerald, I think he's in a great spot here against this Carolina secondary That's that's that hasn't been very good all year long. Um, they're really struggling against opposing wide receiver ones. I do like Fitz here, especially at 7K. Um, I think he's a guy who who you can't bank on for about 7 for 80 as a floor. You do want that touchdown, of course, to kind of come across and, and, and meet, meet uh, value. But at 7K, I don't mind that. Randall Cobb, obviously, I think a lot of people talk to him. You know, they look at him and go, oh, I love him on DK this week, but... He's been solid on FanDuel as well, and in below 7K, I mean, I like him here in this matchup. Uh, obviously, Desmond Trufant's expected to be on Jordy Nelson from what I've seen. Um, Cobb's going to match up against Poole, which is a, f a fairly tough matchup. I do like Cobb still, especially given the fact that his volume has been super high over the last uh, few games, double-digit tar targets in the last three. So you can certainly fire away with Cobb there. Uh, looking at the bottom half of this lineup, Jack Doyle, Nick Novak, Houston Texans. I don't mind Texans here. 4,300, obviously that's a dip down from guys like Denver. Um, you know, still a couple hundred dollar difference from, you know, Arizona, those types of teams. So Nick Novak, obviously in a good spot. He's been a guy who's been used heavily and the price never quite seems to come up for a guy who's kicking field goals a ton, uh, especially at home. It's nearly three per game. So solid option. Uh, Optimizer likes Jack Doyle, like Jack Doyle last week. 4,900, I can see the value standpoint. It's not a terrific matchup for him, but I still think volume, he should be okay. Um, and I think as I pointed out in the tight end pod, he's not my favorite player this week at tight end, but I do like the fact that he does open up some value in terms of other positions, like getting Johnson in there, like getting Matt Ryan. So, uh, you know, those are, you know, uh, you know, obviously guys that you can you can pay up and use. So Doyle's okay uh, doing that with. Uh, we look at the GPP one here next, and uh, Andrew Luck pops up, 7,900. He has a little bit of a discount from guys like Brady, from guys like Rogers, uh, Ryan Wilson, who I like as well. Um, 
and, and you know you're getting here exposure to obviously a passing attack that that we have seen the upside and i think one of the biggest hinging points of colts chief is going to be the battle of the lines um you know the the kansas city defensive line hasn't been great neither has the colts offensive line so um you know whoever comes a- ahead in that battle i think is going to show where the production is because i did talk about the chiefs as a, a gpp defense boomer bust type style um to fire away with in one or two lineups this week because i do think i do think indy will get some some ownership kind of as the week goes on we've seen a little bit of a uh, industry kind of geared towards them because luck has played very well. Um, you know, and we look luck, I point out here, uh, luck has, you know, 20 plus Fanduel points in the last three games, obviously struggled against Denver, um, which, you know, many quarterbacks do. So we see a couple things shake up here, obviously with the drop down to luck and the drop down from where to like Garrett Blunt. Um, we see Julio Jones come into play and, and Jones is obviously a high upside play against, uh, Green Bay with no Sam Shields, basically no secondary whatsoever in terms of starters. Um, you can look at Jones as kind of a, a lock in, especially with all the value here. Um, Blunt's an interesting call because, you know, he's always remaining fairly cheap. Um, wasn't used against Buffalo last time. I'm curious to see how this one plays out because obviously game flow and, and play calling is always something that, that either hinders Blunt or, or gives him a very solid game. Last week, things were in his favor. It wasn't much of the passing attack. It was just him running the ball off. This week, I, I could see things kind of going two ways. You know, Patriots either ram it down the throat with Blunt, which is possible. We just saw Jay Ajayi go for 200 plus yards against his Bills defense. Or we could possibly see, um, you know, a lot of the passing attack, a lot of Rob Gronkowski, a lot of James White, um, a lot of Julian Edelman play out and more just see Brady, Barry, Rex Ryan in this defense. So curious to see how that plays out. That's why he's in the GPP play. We've seen the two touchdown upside from him. We've seen 100 plus yards. So I do like that call, especially with the value that he could possibly return. 6,600 is a really nice pivot because I don't think he's going to get a lot of ownership, especially with Devontae Booker, with uh, Spencer Ware, Lamar Miller, Matt Forte, all guys below 7,500. Even a Devonta Freeman's only 69. So there's a lot of running backs you can go with this week. Uh, Quiz Rogers is another name you can toss out there even. So uh, I do like that. Not much of a difference elsewhere. Um, you know, we're looking at a lot of the same core guys as it always is. Um, but I do like that GPP lineup. The optimal stack this week is the Colts. Um, you look at Andrew Luck, T.Y. Hilton, Jack Doyle. And obviously there is a lot of upside. We saw that upside last week. We've seen this Kansas City defense. It's It's been hit or miss. I mean, you take out the, the Fitzpatrick game. They have been fairly lackluster this year, especially um, getting, you know, turnovers. But, you know, the Colts sit with the 24 team total. Um, it's not an expensive stack because you're pairing Hilton 7,800, not badly priced. Um, but you're also getting Jack Doyle in here, 4,900. It, it brings in Vinatieri, but you can swap anyone out there if you want. Um, I, so I do like this, and it's also mixing in Mike Evans, Randall Cobb, who I like. Randall Cobb's projection when he hit the GPP projections goes up to nearly 15 points. Um, you see the position projection color value change, so I do like that. Um, and also David Johnson. So there's a lot of high floor guys you can go with, and I think the stacks this week, I think you're going to see a lot of Winston, um, you know, Mike Evans stacks. I think, I think you're going to see a lot of, you know, uh, obviously both sides of the Falcons game. You're going to see Saints. You're going to see Seahawks. Um, Colts might get lo- lost a little bit in that. I, I, I do think they'll still get, gauge some ownership as we come into more of the week. So keep an eye on that. I think it's on a pretty similar core. Uh, if you want to check out this article, it is up on dailyfantasycafe.com. I go into a little bit more detail about each guy here. Obviously, as I have uh, now, things are a result to change. Uh, we will have the DraftKings one coming up later on this week, so be sure to check that out. Uh, and our cheat sheets are up as well, which you can find in your My Dashboard. Um, which is up at the top of the screen. So be sure to check that out uh, and, and check out the rest of our great content for week eight.